Six teams from the East had aspirations of a Conference USA crown at season's beginning. Now, as the leaves have fallen, so have many of the contenders. Yet two remain in the race towards the title game. Marshall, unmerciful at home, hits the road, where the results have been quite the opposite. Especially in East Carolina, where the Pirates have dominated this season and the series. First place in the East is on the line between the two teams who have survived the season thus far. In Greenville, North Carolina, a sellout crowd of over 40,000 await a critical conference USA matchup between the Marshall Thundering Herd and the East Carolina Pirates. The Pirates ready to take the home field at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. in West Virginia, the Marshall Thundering Herd. I'm Carter Blackburn. For both of these teams, Marshall and East Carolina, it's been kind of up and down seasons. The Pirates had the big high profile wins the beginning of the year against West Virginia and Virginia Tech. Both of these teams have endured three game losing streaks, but the bottom line is with four games left in the season, they are atop the Conference USA Eastern Division standings, both at three and one in conference play, which makes this a critical Conference USA matchup between the Pirates and the Thundering Herd. Aaron Taylor joins me. You look at Marshall's season there, it's pretty pretty easy to figure out they just haven't played well on the road well I tell you what Carter they really haven't you got to remember football players are creatures of habit there's just so much more to manage on the road and Marshall early on hadn't done a good job of it at home the thundering herd are three and one on the road just one and three had the big loss early against Wisconsin and then lost later on in week five with the West Virginia and then to a lowly UAB team Carter so to win on the road you must bring your defense you must protect the football and you have to get the ball into your playmakers hands Marshall has those playmakers sophomore running back Darius Marshall is a leading rusher from a year ago has done a great job running the football over 100 yards last week averaging seven yards a carry and then senior Darius Passmore the tall rangy receiver averages 17 yards a catch so he can certainly stretch the field. Well, while Marshall has struggled on the road, East Carolina has been really good at home. You count that Charlotte win over Virginia Tech at the beginning of the season, and the Pirates 3-1 and one in their home games. Well, they love playing at home, and for good reason, Carter. In fact, they've won four of their last five versus their home opponents in the Conference USA. They do a tremendous job here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. ECU, a very good team. Creatures of habit doing a great job, but the explosion of Norman Whitley last week had a breakout game. He's small and shifty, but he does a good job of getting to the second level, breaking tackles, and making people miss. ECU would love another huge game out of Whitley to take some pressure off of a passing game that's been inconsistent at times. He's certainly a key player in the game, and now Aaron guides us through the progressive keys to the game. Well, Carter, for Marshall Thundering Herd, Confucius say a balanced offense is the key to happiness, and it'll also keep them out of predictable situations and make ECU defend the entire field. And then defensively, they've got to disrupt the quarterbacks to get ECU's offense out of its rhythm. That means pressure, blitzes, disguising coverages, timing the snap count. Then ECU, offensively, they've got to play consistent at quarterback. Pinckney and Cass must perform. Both quarterbacks are going to play tonight. They both look good, but they've also been inconsistent at times. And then finally, the battle of the bulge. The strength of ECU's defense is their physical, aggressive defensive line, so they must, must win their matchup in the passing game and keep those guys on the offensive line when they're trying to zone block. 
Marshall has never won here in Greenville, North Carolina. However, last year in 2007 in Huntington, West Virginia, the Thundering Herd knocked East Carolina out of a possible chance of the Conference USA East Division a season ago. So in 2008, they meet again. Both teams atop the standings in Conference USA's Eastern Division. Craig Rattanamorn will kick it away. Harrison, TJ Lee back deep to receive, and the wind blows it off the tee. And sure enough, we had some rain showers here in Greenville, North Carolina, but they have quickly blown through, and it is a gorgeous day in the eastern half of the Tar Heel State. It certainly is, Carter. This is what fall football is all about. The leaves are turning. You got a nice crisp breeze here for North Carolina. The sun is shining, and we have a huge game in the east for the Conference USA Division. Marshall in East Carolina underway from a sold-out Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. Dwayne Harris brings it out of the end zone. It has room to run. Dwayne Harris across the 35, dragging a pile of Marshall special teams defenders all the way to the 44. So the East Carolina offense will be out first. The quarterback rotation continues. It will be the senior, Patrick Pinkney, who begins the day at quarterback for East Carolina. Well, Carter, the key for Pinkney today is going to be able to get into a flow and into a rhythm. He has a tendency to start games big and then drop off as the game goes along. They have to be able to get him success early on in this ball game. They want to get Dwayne Harris the football. He's at the bottom of the screen, handing off on first down. Whitley breaks it back. Whitley slips through a tackle and turns a negative into a positive seven on first down. Whitley will be the featured back in Todd Fitch's East Carolina offense. The group up front gave up six sacks versus UCF. You now have Terrence Campbell starting in left guard because of an injury to Stanley Bryant. Norman Whitley, 134 yards rushing versus UCF. The tight end, Devon Drew, may be the biggest threat in the passing game. He's certainly a big target and a safety valve for a quarterback that struggles. Look for Pinckney to look for him throughout the day. Call this second down and two. Whitley gets it again. This time they're sitting on it. Michael Janik makes the stop to force third down. The Marshall defensive unit, Rick Minter's 4-3 defense. The ends have played well. Michael Janik and Albert McClellan on the edges for Marshall. Linebackers, Maurice Kitchens is the Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week after a great effort versus Houston last Tuesday. And the secondary free safety, C.J. Spillman, back from a hand injury. Third down and short for East Carolina. Pinkney out of the shotgun, high snap. He holds it in, keeps it, and is stopped short. And this is what Skip Holtz talked about in the last performance against UCF when his team went one of eight on third down in the first half. He says we absolutely have to be able to convert, convert third down and short. And that was a third down and short, and those are the ones you have to get to be able to move the ball. This can really help a defense out as well. When your defense is going to be on the field and Marshall has a propensity to be able to run the football, you have to be able to let your guys rest. I know it's early. Sometimes you get jitters offensively, but ECU needs to come to the sideline, relax a little bit, start calling up some plays and moving the football. There's a flag because Spann had called for the fair catch. Emmanuel Spann called for the fair catch, and an East Carolina defender hit him anyways. So this should be a 15-yarder. Well, Carter, there's certainly no love lost between these two teams. This is a bit of rivalry, and not necessarily that these guys hate each other, but they know what's going on in this game and what this game entails. I would expect a very physical football game, and sometimes when you see that, you'll see personal foul penalties. And Four, Kick, catch, interference, number 24, kicking team. 15 yards, by the foul, first down. Right here, you see him waving his hand for the fair catch. He makes it right there. Just a bonehead play coming on and getting the penalty. And Emmanuel Davis, the young freshman, done such a good job last week playing defensive back. Keep your eye on him. He's a good player, but made a mistake there early, giving advantageous field position to the herd. Both teams have started off with good field position. East Carolina didn't do much with it. 
Chubb Small on the first down carry with the handoff from Mark Kane, the red shirt freshman. Mark Snyder telling us earlier this week, yeah, he's a freshman. We started the year with him managing the game. Now we want him to make plays. Well, a lot of times a young quarterback will come in and not necessarily want to lose the ball game, so be conservative. He's thrown 10 touchdowns and had eight interceptions, but at some point, you're going to need your quarterback to be a little bit more confident, take some more shots downfield, and that's very tough for a young player who may not be comfortable in his first year playing. Motion on the line. Looked like Jay Ross jumped. It is a big group up front for East Carolina defensively. They got some big. Contact. Defense. Number 90. Five yard penalty. Second down. Tough task with this Marshall offense. The group up front led by Brian Leggett. He's the center. A couple of freshmen at tackle for Marshall. In the backfield, Darius Marshall, as Aaron told us all about, and Darius Passmore, who will catch and run. What a great football name, Darius Passmore. How apropos, it's like me having Aaron Sandwich. Name. Aaron Blockmore. <laughs> Play action on second down and short. Lots of time for Can to throw. Looking for Passmore, it's easily intercepted. Emmanuel Davis, who had the key interception in the win last Sunday versus UCF, now has his third interception of his redshirt freshman year. This is his first career start, and Emmanuel Davis makes the most of it. Well, we talked to defensive coordinator Greg Hudson, who does such a great job for this Pirate defense, and he talked about how impressed he was with Emmanuel Davis. Davis made the big play to get the win over UCF and on the first drive against Marshall, another INT. College football on CBS College Sports is brought to you by Geico, where 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Bud Light, endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And by the Home Depot, you can do it. We can help. Petey the Pirate overseeing Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in the spirit of Blackbeard. Let's go back to that interception on the ball thrown by Can to Passmore. Passmore does a great job of running the route, gets inside. It's just a poorly thrown ball and a poor decision, allowing Emmanuel Davis to come underneath. This young man has a good nose for the football. <laughs> he was a tailback in safety in high school, but he's done a pretty good job in the secondary now making plays, especially for a freshman. ECU offense starts from the Marshall side of the football after the good run back there by Davis after the interception. So first and 10 from the Marshall 49. It is Patrick Pinckney out for the second series. Toss sweep to Norman Whitley. You go back to last week against UCF. This is what Emmanuel Davis did to seal, virtually seal that win in the top of the first overtime last Sunday. Davis picking up. UCF quarterback Rob Calabrese, so he has made two big picks for his teams from a Sunday to six days later on Saturday. And he also did a good job causing the fumble that set that up last week as well. The young man has a nose for the football and proven to be a playmaker already. Well, we know what East Carolina wants to do from the early play calling from Todd Fitch trying to establish the run against Marshall. And right now they had some early success on with some missed tackles, but going up inside, Marshall's defense is pretty strong and big up inside and doing a good job right now of stopping that run game of ECU bringing up another one of those critical third down plays that we talked about Carter but this one not so short. Well the Pirates failed to convert on third and short on the opening drive. This is their second possession faced with third down and six. Freeney goes in motion. Patrick Pinckney out of the shotgun with pressure coming, trying to set up the screen. The pass is caught for a minimal game. Brandon Simmons on the high throw from Pinckney, able to haul it in, but yet again, three and out for East Carolina. Yeah, and that's what defensive coordinator for the herd, Rick Minter, likes to do is bring pressure. That time he brought pressure off the edge right in Pinckney's face, kind of forced the throw to be a little bit high, trying to get the ball to the receiver out on the flat. Didn't work there. Credit Minter being aggressive early, forcing another three and out in the punt for ECU's offense. 
low punt. Span comes up to field it at the 17. This time, no pirate there to pop him after the fair catch. You know, from 1983 to 2007, Petey had the same uniform. He's got the new digs today. Where will tomorrow take you? Will it make you stronger? Will you be inspired? Will you discover something new? Will you discover something timeless? Will you help someone learn? Will you help someone live? Wherever tomorrow may lead you, it starts here. Conference USA, home to talented student athletes from 12 great universities. Every year, the competition within CUSA gets tougher and the rivalries get more intense. Is this looking like a rivalry game now? This is our house. Conference USA. Rivalries live here. East Carolina and Marshall forever linked because of the events of November 14th, 1970, when the Marshall football team traveling back from Greenville, North Carolina. Southern Airlines, a charter jet carrying the Marshall team, coaches and fans crashed on approach back into Huntington, West Virginia. All 75 people on board were killed. This is the plaque outside of where the visiting team runs on the field here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, commemorating that day and remembering that 1970 Marshall team that left here in Greenville, North Carolina. And the plane crashed on its return to Huntington, West Virginia. So today, Mark Snyder led his team onto the field here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium past that plaque, which commemorates that day on November 14, 1970. And of course, the, the movie We Are Marshall, which a lot of folks have seen, tells the story of Jack Lingle bringing that program back when they made the decision to continue on with the football program. We take a look at the East Carolina defensive starters now. Greg Hudson's 4-3 defense. Linville Joseph, the biggest of a, a cumbrous group up front. Pierre Bell, weak side linebacker off a nine tackle day versus UCF. Van Eskridge actually leads the team in tackles from free safety. Plus, he has two INTs. This is second down and eight for Marshall from the 20. Can throwing and completing to Cody Slate. Flag comes in after the play. Good job of pitch and catch, throwing to Cody Slate, the second leading receiver, and big target is a tight end. It's a good way to get the confidence back for a quarterback to do an interception on the first series. Personal foul. Face mask, 23, defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic, first down. Well, we talked about it, Carter. Sometimes in these physical football games, players get excited. You can't afford to have penalties and face masks like that. Remember, this year the rule was changed. It's an automatic 15 yards. Again, ECU's defense making a mistake, giving up unnecessary field position. Three penalties now against East Carolina. Two of them have been 15 yards. First and 10 for the herd from the 39. Chubb Small gets the first down handoff and picks up about three. Good job by that big ECU defensive line eating people up. Marshall's offense likes to run the zone play. That means they do a lot of combination blocks up front. You get offensive linemen starting off on a double team on a down lineman working their way up to a linebacker. Right there, the ECU front did a good job of eating two people up, allowing the linebackers to come up and get a short gain on first down. A four wide look for the herd on second down. So the safety's back up for East Carolina. Setting up the screen, bobbled and dropped by Cody Slate. So you see the rarely seen tight end bubble screen, but that's kind of how both of these teams will use their tight ends. Well, you see early on Marshall trying to get the ball to Cody Slate. He's definitely a playmaker, averaging 13 yards per catch, so he's a good person to get the ball into the hands. But ECU's done a good job of sniffing that one out. On the road, Marshall has struggled offensively. Look at left side, what they do in Huntington, right side on average on the road, where they won just once. That was a win at Southern Miss. 
You got to notice, Carter, the rushing yards for Marshall. That's the biggest difference. For whatever reason, they struggle running the ball. And it's a big interception again by Emmanuel Davis. Guess who? Emmanuel Davis picks it off on third down and seven. Two drives for Marshall. Both have ended in picks by the red shirt freshman, Emmanuel Davis, in the first start of his East Carolina career. I'll tell you what, Carter, if you took the last two minutes of last week's game and the first three or four minutes from this week's game, that's a highlight film for an entire year. Emmanuel Davis doing a good job of reading and reacting, breaking on the football, just doing a great job covered out on the edge against Darius Passmore, not playing like a freshman at all. When you get corner play like that that gives you a lot of freedom and flexibility so look for Greg Hudson to take advantage of that defensively now we'll see if the Pirates can move the football three and out on the first couple of possessions Aaron Johnson showing blitz pressuring Pinckney and sacking Patrick Pinckney Aaron Johnson the strong safety coming all the way on the blitz did a good job on the backside the previous series they brought a blitz to Pinckney's face this time they bring a blitz from the backside. Rick Mentor likes to bring pressure. It's play action, something that ECU struggled with last week. They gave up six passes on play action passes. You see Pinckney right before this turned his back to the offensive line or to the defense. He wasn't able to see the pressure coming. They've got to change that and get rid of that ball quicker if they're going to run play action like that. You saw in the starting lineup that Terrence Campbell takes over at left tackle because Stanley Bryant's out. And that is exactly where Marshall is trying to attack the East Carolina offense. This time able to run right past that pressure Norman Whitley. Good way to take pressure off the defense and keep them from blitzing is to beat the blitz and you can do that with draws and big plays up top. Maybe ECU was trying to do that with the play action pass. Ended up giving them a sack but here again we're in third down. ECU from a confidence standpoint has to be able to convert this. This will be their third three and out if they do not convert here. Call it third down and three with a four wide look. Pinkney throws it's caught by Devon Drew and there is the first third down conversion and the first first down of the game for East Carolina midway through the first quarter. Good job of getting rid of the ball quickly. Pinkney does a good job of setting his feet throwing putting the ball right on the money. Devon Drew does a good job of reaching out getting the first down. You see that the offensive line did a good job of chopping down Marshall's defensive line something they've done very good is batting a lot of balls right there it didn't work. ECU moves the chains. And you see what Devon Drew can do in that passing game when East Carolina is able to get him the football. Pinkney on the rollout, looking to the end zone, passes out of bounds incomplete. Some good sportsmanship there from Aaron Johnson, helping up ECU cheerleader he knocked over. Well, a lot of times when teams like to the blitz, they'll take Pinkney out and roll around, but Marshall doing a good job of showing up and Maurice Kitchens, the playmaker for that Marshall Hurd defense, does such a good job. The team's leading tackler, he finds a way to make his presence known, just like he did that time, getting to the quarterback. Made it known versus Houston last Tuesday. An 80-yard fumble recovery, had an interception. That's why he's the conference defensive player of the week. Second and 10, the pocket collapsing. So Whitley, the check down in the flat. He takes a hit and just keeps on rolling. We check out our icy hot injury report and this is what we told you about the left tackle Stanley Bryan really the leader of the offensive line injured his knee for the second time this season versus UCF they expected to be out about a month. Yeah what that injury did is it meant that a lot of people had to come in and fill in for him DJ Scott went to right tackle Terrence Cabell moved over to left tackle and a lot of times the offensive line is the only position in football where you really have to play next to the guy next to you so moving positions can cause this Disruption and it's hurt ECU throughout the year. Hand off to Whitley on third down and two, and he picks up those tough yards to move the chains again as the Pirates take it into the red zone where they have been outstanding in 2008. They've done a very good job in the red zone. In fact, they're 90% when they cross the 20 yard line, they find a way to punch it in, and two thirds of the time, they find a way to get a touchdown. This would be a much needed score because Marshall's defense does a good job early on only allowing an average of three points in the first quarter. 
J.R. Rogers in at tailback. Pinkney fakes it to him and keeps it himself for a nine yard gain on first down. This was a great play fake. Pinkney called his own number here, fakes the ride, it's just a zone draw, goes up inside. Great job by Patrick Pinkney moving the chains and moving the football. They seem to be in a rhythm now, Carter, and this is exactly what ECU needs. That big conversion to Devon Drew on third down was what sparked this drive. On a heck of a fake by Patrick Pinkney. Second down and short. Whitley back in at tailback. He does take it on second down and gets a couple of yards to the five. So after the Pirates went three and out on the first couple of possessions, you see the sustained drive. And it's mostly been on the ground, just that one big completion to Drew. And the person that this is helping the most is Patrick Pinkney. You have to be able to get a quarterback into a flow and be positive and have some confidence early on. That's been the thing that he struggled with. When he hasn't played well early, it's just gotten worse. But when he can come out, establish a rhythm like he's doing on this drive, he's a tremendous football player. Ninth play of the drive is a handoff to Whitley. Who's dropped short of the end zone? Daquan Bimbry comes in to make the stop. Rob Cass is on the sidelines right now for East Carolina as Patrick Pinkney tries to lead the touchdown drive, and there it is. Norman Whitley, flag on the play as Whitley dances into the end zone. ECU on that, employing the hurry up offense. They get right back to the line of scrimmage and try to catch Marshall sleeping, and it appears to work. We'll have to see what this penalty is. And if it stands, it would be the fourth rushing touchdown for Norman Whitley. The sophomore began the year as the fourth string running back. Crack back block, number 81 offense. 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat, second down. That has to be a chop block call. It's a critical penalty early on. You see the clip coming in right here from the side, right here. You have to be able to keep your body up in front. It looked to be a pretty good block to me because his head was in front of the defender. I don't know about that call, Carter. That looked to be a pretty legal play to me. So wipe out the touchdown and moving East Carolina all the way back to the 17 for second down and goal from the 17. Pinkney from the shotgun trying to set up a screen. The pass is incomplete, intended for Whitley. These are the drive killers. These are the things you hate. It was a touchdown that they had, but unfortunately there was a penalty called. But now ECU is on the 17-yard line looking to get in. Had they scored that touchdown, that would have been their first first quarter touchdown they hadn't scored one in the last six games so this is a big drive in the red zone for ECU not only from a point standpoint but from a confidence standpoint and by the way there's no such thing as a crack back block penalty that had to have been a chop block Brandon Simmons hit hard as he gets to the 15 nice hit there from Mario Harvey Mario Harvey does a good job being a sack master for these guys. Got 4.5 on the year and looks to be a pretty good run stopper on that play. Good linebackers do that. They sniff out where the football is and force a third down. And again, that critical penalty. ECU hurting themselves on both sides of the football right now with penalties and having to settle for a field goal when they work so hard to cross the goal line and punch one in. Hardman from 32. We saw him in warm-ups miss from 35. This is good. So instead of six on the board for a touchdown, East Carolina settles for a 32-yard field goal from Ben Hartman. But it's the Pirates on top first, 3-0. East Carolina has a touchdown wiped out on a penalty. Settling with a field goal from Ben Hartman as we check out our Bud Light Stat Six Pack. The first five numbers will be season numbers for Marshall and East Carolina. The last, the total yards today. And when you see the, the passing yards for East Carolina, you'll understand why Skip Holt says we have to get more of a passing game. We have to be better in the passing game. Same could probably be said for both of these teams. Yeah, there's no question, Carter. When you look at these teams, they're pretty strikingly similar. 
statistically, but you cannot be an effective offense if you're one dimensional. And certainly, ECU can run the football, but they have to be able to take shots downfield and throw the football. That means getting the ball to Dwayne Harris. And hey, they have to protect. They ran a play action pass. They tried to take a shot up top, but they didn't protect. And play action passing is very hard for offensive linemen to do because it requires you to be physical on the initial onset of the play and then settle back down in passing. It's kind of a a hard thing to do to be able to hold and right now ECU didn't do a good job of it last week and early on in this game they're not doing a good job of it as well. East Carolina goes three and out on the first couple of possessions and then a 12 play field goal drive. Chance for a big return here. Darius Marshall brings it all the way to the 50 yard line. A 46 yard return for Darius Marshall. Carter, they were very lucky. Watch the middle of the screen. This field just opens up. He's one on one with the kicker, makes a miss, and does a good job of getting out. ECU was able to fall back in inside and give him some help, but this was very close to going out of the gate. Very good field position for the herd. Midway towards the end of the first quarter. Marshall's only two drives have both ended in interceptions, both from Emmanuel Davis. He's locked in with Darius Passmore now on first down. It's Darius Marshall who bounces it to the outside with the stiff arm. Darius Marshall finally shoved out at the 28. A 22 yard pickup for the sophomore Darius Marshall. This is a great job of just being a belly zone. It starts out one way to the left and he cuts it back off to his left. Breaking tackles, lots of missed tackles and bad angles by this ECU defense. And that's what Darius Marshall in this running game of the herd can do. They run a lot of zones and create misdirection and force defenses to stay in their lanes and tackle well. And right there on that last play, ECU didn't do it. That's just the second first down of the game for Marshall. And it comes on that big run from Darius Marshall. The racehorse package is Darius Passmore lines up at QB and takes it for about three yards. That's what Marshall calls it, not the, the wild hog or the wild cat, the wild rebel. They call it the racehorse. Well, that's what they like to do when they bring their best playmaker, Darius Passborn, to the backfield, direct snap the ball to him. It gives them a lot of options. They can do the speed sweep to the outside. It forces the defense to protect the entire field. They have to take the speed sweep to the outside or plays like we saw right there back up the middle. Good four-yard gain on first down. Back to a conventional horse on second down is can toss his chunk small takes a huge pop from Van Eskridge the free safety but it's after Chuck small picks up the first down let's listen to it Woo! Van Eskridge is the leading tackler on this team and that's why he comes up and bring the wood yesterday coach Holtz was talking about Van Eskridge would be a good player as long as he learned to be physical I think he figured it out on that play Usually you don't want your free safety to be the leading tackler, but he can come up and make plays in the run game. I think they're okay with it if he can play like that. Pirates show pressure on first down now that Marshall crosses into the red zone. With a play clock winding down, Cam just does get it off. Darius Marshall hammered as soon as he gets it. Forward progress has him down right around the line of scrimmage. Pierre Bell leads the charge. Great job by that ECU defense up front doing a good job of being able to take the line of scrimmage and control it up front. You see what they're trying to do, run out of the gate, but good job by the defensive line of eating up blockers and doing a good job of winning that battle up front. That was one of the keys that we talked about. This is gonna be a physical game, and right there on that play and on this drive, ECU's defense starting to make plays where early on they got gas, Carter. Give credit to Zach Slate, too, for blowing that up from his in position. Second down and 10. Darius Marshall stood up and driven back again. This time it's Linville Joseph, the big sophomore from Florida, who's a little less big than he was at the end of his freshman year. He dropped 72 pounds. That's pretty impressive, and I think it's a testament to Linville Joseph and what he's done. Who knows whether it's Weight Watchers or Nutrisystem or probably just running and doing some extra cardiovascular but it makes him a better player because he's in better shape and it showed right there on that last play what being in good shape allows him to do i think he called jenny 
<laughs> this is third down and nine inside the East Carolina 20. Can on the rollout looking for Slate. Now Can's going to tuck it and be shoved out at the 15. Late hit coming. Dakota Marshall got Can right as he was stepping out of bounds. If it's what we think it is, that's automatic first down. This would be a terrible call that would hurt this ECU defense. Something that would be a shame. They've done a, such a good job in this drive of forcing what looked to be a field goal. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 23. Defense. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. Close. It, it was very close. I think the refs are trying to send a message that they're going to allow them to play physical. You got to give credit to Dakota Marshall wanting to come up and lay a lick on the quarterback. But if it's questionable, a smart, heady player will not take that. Young Dakota Marshall, a sophomore, he learned something about football on that play. You see Skip Holtz summoning him off the field and then discussing it with him. First down, no gain. Linville Joseph again leads a charge. Chubb Small, the senior from Auburndale, Alabama, on the carry. That'll do it for the first 15 minutes. 3-0 East Carolina lead. But can Marshall punch it in when we come back for quarter number two from a sold-out Dowdy Ficklin Stadium? Start of the second quarter, it's East Carolina 3-0 on Marshall. The thundering hurt threatening in the red zone, but that's where the Pirate defense has been at its best. They do a good job down low, Carter. They've stopped nine of 27 drives since they've been down there, including three turnovers on downs, two forced fumbles, and two missed field goals. If you're going to play well in any area on the field on defense, it's certainly down here in the red zone. And you got to give credit to Greg Hudson and what a great job he's doing here for ECU. These players really respect him, and he's a tough coach. I call him a player's coach because he's tough and his players play for him. He's not kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. He's an intense guy that gets these guys prepared this is a great hire bringing Greg Hudson here has done a great job for the defense let's see if he can get these guys going put them in a position to just go out there relax and make a play here on second down racehorse formation out of the change between quarters Darius Passmore lined up for the direct snap here's Passmore trying to turn the corner denied flag on the play Got a hold against Marshall. We're gonna move him back. Well, East Carolina has been victimized. Now RG Detilio is gonna tell us about a critical call against Marshall. ECU doing a great job on the race horse. Number 81, offense. 10 yard penalty. Line of scrimmage. Replay second down. ECU's defense doing a great job against the racehorse. When they see them come out in this formation, they holler, cat, 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 cat. It says because it's like trying to hurt cats when you have that racehorse defense or that offense out there. So the way and the adjustment that Greg Hudson, the defensive coordinator, made, he says, I want my guys to come off the football, engage, and then pop up like a linebacker, get 22 eyes on the football, and it worked beautifully on that last play. They played against it earlier this year when they played against West Virginia, so that's, that's when he came up with the defensive call. Like a herding cats. And talking with him, Carter, he said his strategy in that game was to keep them in the same defense so that they didn't have to think. He said when his players go out there and play, they're at their best when they're not thinking, they're just reacting. He's trying to replicate that on this series against that formation. And again, great job by defensive coordinator Greg Hudson. The officiating crew respots the football for second down and goal now after the penalty. So it's second down and goal from the 18. This is the third Marshall drive. The first two ended in interceptions. Mark Can, the red shirt freshman QB, on the roll out to the end zone for Passmore, and he misses him. Darius Passmore was wide open in the back corner of the end zone. Now just a sprint out to the right side. Darius Passmore did a good job of getting behind his defender. Just runs an out and up or a chair route. Does a good job of beating the, the defensive back on the outside. The ball's just over so and you saw a little fluster from Passmore that that pass wasn't there. I mean, he had a 
good five yard separation from Dakota Marshall. Yeah, well, Dakota Marshall's lucky that ball was overthrown, or that could have been another play in the same series that could have been costly for these guys. Ninth play of the Marshall drive. Can is just one for five passing. And with the play clock winding down, he just does get the snap off running on third down and goal from the 18. Darius Marshall carries it inside the 10. But that's going to bring on the Marshall field goal unit. Again, credit ECU's defense for doing what they needed to do to keep the football out of the end zone. One of the things they do well, we talked about, is play red zone defense. And right now, these teams apparently are going to trade field goals heading into this early second quarter. This is going to be the type of game we can expect to see tonight, a very physical game that's dominated by the defenses. Call this a 26-yarder. Craig Rattanamore, the junior, who came to Marshall as a soccer player, but he's given up his soccer career to kick for the Marshall football team. His 26-yarder is no good. Missed it to the right. Mark it down as another red zone stop for the East Carolina defense. They had a shot at the end zone, missed it, and then Rattanamore misses a 26-yarder. Still 3 nothing. you see. Similar programs between Marshall and East Carolina building back up. And this is 2008, how similar the numbers are coming into this game. It's eerie how similar these two teams are, Carter. And when you're in a ball game like this, oftentimes the difference is one or two plays. We've seen a missed field goal by Marshall. We've seen lots of penalties by ECU. It's going to be the team that eliminates the big mistake that is going to fare the best at the end of this ball game. Penalty flag before the snap. Looks to be a false start. False start. Number three, offense. Five yard penalty. First down. That's a tight end, Devon Drew. Right now, ECU's a little out of sync. They've got penalties on both sides of the football. They're just hurting themselves and giving up critical field position, whether it's defense or on offense. And in a tight game, when you have offenses that are struggling to move the ball a little bit, penalties can be hurtful. And right now, the Pirates aren't helping themselves. TJ Lee goes in motion on first down at 15. The handoff goes to Norman Whitley who picks up a couple on first down as we check in with the CBS College Sports Desk. All right, Carter, thanks a lot. Adam Zucker here. Nick Saban's return to LSU over on CBS. It was 7-0 Bama, but then the Tigers score two straight. The second, Charles Scott, 31 yards for number 32. He's not going down. Jarrett Lee to Demetrius Bird for the first touchdown to make it 14-7 over number one. Back to you guys. That's one of the big questions about LSU is quarterback Jared Lee. Well, when you got Charles Scott, the running back that runs like he can, that's what you want to be able to do is play physical football. I do not think that Alabama is going to be able to come out of the SEC undefeated. It may be today or it may be against Florida in the SEC championship game. Screen to Whitley picks up a first down for East Carolina near the first down. That makes Mark this one off. Now Detillier says, yep, move the chains. Norman Whitley is becoming the featured back in this East Carolina offense. 134 rushing yards versus UCF. Mentioned that he began the year as the fourth string running back. Dominique Lindsay went down in preseason camp with an injured knee. Brandon Simmons was then the starting running back, a walk on. Jonathan Williams has actually been suspended for the rest of the year. So it's Norman Whitley's job now, and he's made the most of it. Defender falls down, so a wide open Alex Taylor moves it into Marshall territory. Good job by East Carolina again running the play action. They were out of the eye formation. They had two backs to go up, do a good job. One of the things they said they wanted to do, East Carolina, to try and eliminate those sacks and pressures on play action is get rid of the football quicker. They did a great job, Pinkney did, finding the zone on that last play, moving the chains. Taylor has one touchdown catch without Jamar Bryant, who's also suspended. This wide receiving core has a total of two touchdown catches. Dwayne Harris has one of them. He makes that first down grab to pick up about six. 
Dwayne Harris, a young sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, talked about liking the football in his hands quick out in the flat. He's got tremendous self-efficacy. That means he's confident in his ability to do some things out on the edge and right there doing a good job of getting the ball in his hands, moving the chains, getting six yards. But Dwayne Harris is a playmaker and a leading receiver on this team for a reason, and we just saw a little bit of it right there. He's coming back from a shoulder injury, had only two catches versus UCF on Sunday because they were running the ball so dang well. Absolutely. Pressure coming on second down and four. Whitley runs right into the teeth of that pressure. Mario Harvey stops him about a yard short of the first down. Harvey's a tough hitter. I mean, he could knock a dog off a T-bone stake with the way he comes up and runs support. <laughs> Rob Cass still on the sideline. East Carolina has been rotating Rob Cass and Patrick Pinkney at QB. But obviously, Skip Holtz and Todd Fitz like the way that Pinkney's managed this game so far. Well, the key is to get Pinkney into a rhythm. And right now, barring the penalties, ECU's done a pretty good job. Pinkney is running this offense very, very well. Hard counts right there. Good job, ECU, switching it up, catching the defense of Marshall off guard. Offside. Not a defense. Five yard penalty. Penalty rewards out in a first down. Michael Janik jumps, giving East Carolina the first down. Well, we talked about the offense and one of the things that they had to do to take advantage or to nullify a very aggressive blitzing Marshall defense was to be able to do things where, like, you can hard count people, maybe do a hurry-up offense and keep them out of their game because when Marshall's able to line up and pin their ears back and come, they're pretty dangerous. But when you do a good job hard counting like they did on that last play, it really helps your guys out all over the place. What else offensively do you kind of dial up against a blitzing defense? As we see Pingney go on play action on first down now he has to scramble as the pocket breaks down he's ridden down by memory after a one yard game well the best way to stop the blitz is to beat it up top with a play action pass or just a regular pass or to run draws and screens both of those things can catch a defense out of position when they're blitzing but right here we see Pinkney doing a good job and doing what he does best and better job than Rob Cass and that's scrambling the football if there's anything that Patrick Pinkney does that is a benefit to him is his ability to be able to avoid sacks and make something out of nothing and right there it's a nominal game but one yard but much better than the sack part of it. Well East Carolina just like against UCF failing to protect especially on play action so second down and nine with four wide that ball may have been tipped the pass is incomplete anyway on second down. Look to be Delvin Johnson out there on the end, and that's one of the things that Marshall does a good job is batting balls down. You take a look there, number 98 does a good job of getting his hands up and certainly gets a hand on it, making it very hard for the receiver to be able to get up underneath it. Joe Womack, the freshman, just couldn't get there, but bringing up a third and long situation. Third down and nine trouble getting the play call in so Skip Holtz has to take a timeout. He does not appear to be happy Hang about on. that miscommunication. Three nothing lead for East Carolina. A this big a third down timeout. and nine coming up. Skip Holtz is East Carolina Pirates seeking win number six which would make them bowl eligible and bowl likely they're coming in at five and three. Here against Marshall, both teams three and one in Conference USA, sitting atop the East Division in Conference USA. Mentioned before we started, it's been up and down seasons for both of these teams, but the bottom line is on November 8th, Mark Snyder said, I'd love to be in this position. It's November, we have a chance to compete for the Conference Championship. Third and nine, Pinkney to the air, batted away and almost intercepted. Ashton Hall, the junior strong safety, comes over to knock it away from Alex Taylor. Well, that's one of those lookout passes. Pinkney laid the ball up. Alex Taylor was just on a skinny post inside here. The safety does a good job of Marshall coming over and disengaging the player from the football. Credit Ashton Hall, the strong safety, with a great job forcing fourth down in a field goal attempt by the Pirates. This is Ben Hartman. It will be from... 51 his career long is a 52 yarder he hit earlier this year rather hit last year versus Utah Hartman from 51 and it is dead on six nothing East Carolina as Ben Hartman nails the 51 yarder he had the game winning kick versus 
versus UCF and a couple of big kicks here to get East Carolina a 6-0 lead. 51-yard field goal from Ben Hartman, the junior out of North Davidson High School in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He had the second game-winning kick of his career in the overtime win over UCF, and now he has a couple of kicks to get this one started. A 31-yarder and a 51-yarder. It's a good job of the kicking game with ECU and Hartman's longest kick prior to that this year was 42 yards, so he must have had his Wheaties this morning and put some leg into it. But I'm sure the ECU is happy to have some points on the board and convert, but these penalties, Carter, early on, they're going to go back and watch this film and look at some tremendous missed opportunities that they've had because they haven't played sound football. It will be Matt Dodge kicking it away to Darius Marshall, who had the big 42-yard return on the last East Carolina kickoff. So Dodge kicks it away from Darius Marshall. Spann will bring it out of the end zone, and Emmanuel Spann gets leveled at the 26. As we check in with Adam at the CBS College Sports Desk. All right, Carter, thanks a lot. We lose to number one, Bama, trailing earlier against LSU. That was the deal for number three, Penn State at Iowa, until Evan Royster goes in for his 11th touchdown of the year, completing an 11-play, 75-yard drive. Remember, Bama, Texas Tech, and Penn State all outside the AP Top 10 to start the year, guys. I think we should just crumple up the preseason polls <laughs> moving forward. Just, just started like the BCS does. Started about... A third of the way into the season, and let's just rank the teams from there. Just goes to show you, football's won and lost on the field. Darius Marshall, and he's seven yards downfield on the first down carry before East Carolina lays a finger on him. A sophomore from Georgia. 4-0 Marshall when he rushes for 100-plus. He got 102 versus Houston, and they won the game. Did a very good job last week, averaged almost seven yards per carry. Just a sophomore, but who's their leading rusher returning from last year. And you give that guy some space, he can make you pay for it. He showed you what he's able to do on that last play. Marshall the handoff again on first down. He got more carries as a freshman than he expected to because a guy named Ahmad Bradshaw left early for the NFL, ended up with the New York Giants, critical member of that Super Bowl run last year for the Giants. So Darius Marshall, as a freshman, ended up with 631 yards, made the CUSA All-Freshman team. 5'10", 189, he gives you a good burst out of the backfield. Yeah, he's not the biggest guy, and his offensive line's pretty small up front, but does a good job with his vision and quickness and burst to be able to get those extra tough yards. Second down, small is dropped. Jeremy Chambliss. The linebacking core is having to pick up the slack because Quentin Cotton, who is maybe the leader of this team, certainly the leader of the defense versus Tulane, tearing his ACL. And, and as we talked with these guys, you know, e even, you know, even the guys on offense, like, like Devon Drew and like Rob Cass and Patrick Pinkney talked about how devastating it was when Quentin Cotton went down with that injury. He really was the heart and soul of this team as a team leader on both sides of the football. So when he went down, ECU felt it throughout the program. Third down pass complete to Cody Slate, who's close to a first down. From the mark, he's got it. Move the chains. Well, it's clear right now that what Marshall wants to do is get the ball in Cody Slate's hand out in the flat. And that was a good job right there, them being able to move the chains and take advantage of some cushion out there on the outside edge. Right now, Mark can. We talked about how he needs to take a little bit more passes. They're moving the chains, but I would expect or I think Marshall fans and players would like to see some shots downfield and maybe eliminate that big long interception they had early on. Obviously, the couple of shots haven't worked out when Marshall's taken them so far today. A couple of interceptions. So now the ground game is Darius Marshall picks up another five on the first down carry. Later in the game, we'll have the Home Depot tools for success. And if Marshall ends up with establishing the run like they are now, 57 rushing yards now for Darius Marshall. I think if Marshall's able to run the football like that, you might be looking as a tool for success being the herd ground game. 
No question. We talked about ECU needing to win the battle of the Bulls early on with the progressive keys to this game. And right now it's the Marshalls offensive line in the running game that are having their way with ECU's defense as we see another example of a great rushing attack. Are you surprised to see this against a stout East Carolina defense right now? Marshall is getting that shove up front and Darius Marshall's now over 60 rushing yards with six minutes to go in the half. I'm a little surprised. I think the strength of ECU's defense was their front four and is their front four. They've also got a good linebacking core. Marshall's offensive line is young, but when you have a game like you did last week against Houston where you rushed the ball for over 250 yards, it gives you confidence and you start to figure things out. The light bulb goes off. This is Chubb Small with the first down carry. No matters who is handling the rock right now for Marshall. They are finding holes to run through. They're just taking this ball right up inside between the tackles. It's just a zone. You see a good job right there. Look at this hole. Huge space for the running back to be able to get through. Small does a good job of showing you his burst, busting through that hole. ECU is going to have to bring a safety down or get their linebackers to fill those sort of holes. But that's what Marshall does so well is creating those running lanes. Safety still playing back on first down, so it's up to those front seven. Marshall coming off the corner from his cornerback position makes the ankle tackle on the senior from Alabama Chubb Small. So Marshall took a couple of shots early on but since those interceptions Mark Snyder and his offensive coordinator John Shannon 19 to 6 now the rushing plays versus passing plays. Well yeah and I wouldn't throw the ball up. two of those six passes were for interceptions so you got to stick with what works and right now the running game is working for the herd. Handed off again on second down and six Darius Marshall picks up a few. This will bring up third down and about three. Well, Cardi, you get into these situations, it starts to become man on man. Marshall's not disguising what they're doing. They're playing physical football, and they're making a definitive statement to the Pirates. We're going to run the football at you. You have to find a way to stop it. And right now, ECU hasn't been able to do that on the ground. they got to be able to dig deep, find a way to win their matchup up front, not do too much, and wrap up the running back. Third down and three. Darius Marshall. Fighting for the first down. Did he get it off before Van Eskridge and the Pirates push him back? This is close. I don't know if he got enough. The safeties, as we talked about earlier, needing to help out in that run game. We're able to come down. Good job up front getting a hat on the hat. The right tackle doing a good job of blowing the defensive end off the ball. You have to take a look at Matt Ottobello doing a great job right there winning his matchup to be able to run the football. I'll tell you what, Carter, Marshall's doing a great job of running, and he have confidence. If you're running the football like this and it's fourth and one, have some confidence in your guys up front. Marshall going for it on a critical fourth down. Remember, they missed a 26-yard field goal, so that may factor in. Marshall, timeout. First call, timeout. Media timeout. Fourth down and one is coming up. Marshall's dominated on the ground game, especially on this drive. This is the 11th play. It's fourth down and one, and yet the herd are trailing 6 0. Marshall going for it on fourth down. They're 6 of 11 on the season. Darius Marshall picks up the first down to the East Carolina 15. Move the chains. That's one in the battle up front. Not a whole lot of discussion or disguising of what's going on. Marshall's offensive line just coming off the football. You see a sea of green. Darius Marshall doing a good job of hitting the ball backside, getting those critical yards needed for the first down. And now it's Marshall in the red zone threatening to score. Chubb Small takes over at tailback and gets the first down carry. Hit at the line, but he manages to lean forward to pick up nearly four yards on the first down carry. Or Chambliss finally brings him down. 
The rushing yards now, 171 for Marshall over East Carolina, and yet zero points on the scoreboard so far for Mark Snyder's team. Well, those two interceptions didn't help. Turnovers will kill you, especially on the road, but when you run the football like they're able to do right now against ECU, it's going to pay dividends. This defense for East Carolina has been on the field a long time, and Marshall's rushing game is doing a great job, and right now winning the battle up front. So much for that zen balance we talked about at the beginning of the ball game that Coach Snyder wanted. Confucius said, they run until they stop the run, right? <laughs> Confucius say, start out with plan, be ready to change plan. <laughs> and right now, offensive coordinator John Shannon and this Marshall Herd doing a great job of using what works for you. Run where they ain't, Carter. And right now, Marshall doing a good job on the ground running the football. Well, Mark Snyder made no bones about it earlier this week. He said, look, we have two priorities on offense. We want to run the football, and we want to hang on to the football. But when we get our shots, we'd like to hit them. But it all begins in the ground game for the Thundering Herd. Third down and nine. Marshall only one for five on third down so far. Mark Can on the rollout on third and nine to the end zone. It is batted down and incomplete. Dakota Marshall bats it away from the intended receiver, Cody Slate. Great job by Dakota Marshall breaking on that football. That young man, again, had the critical penalty early on with the personal foul pushing out of bounds. But right here on the corner route, does a good job of breaking it. That's a good pass breakup. Slate was hoping to be able to get the ball and get the touchdown, but credit ECU's defense for finding a way to get themselves off of the field again. ECU very good in the red zone, forcing a field goal here for the herd. Britannia Morn from 31. He missed a 26 yard field goal attempt earlier. This one, however, is good, and Marshall is on the board. They run it into the red zone, end up with three to make it 6 3. It's a field goal game. A couple of stout defenses going at it in Greenville. East Carolina gives up a 15-play drive, ending up in a 31-yard field goal, 6-3. As we check out the Bud Light Stat six-pack, and look at the rushing number dominance for Marshall, 171 to 43 over East Carolina. And obviously, after they threw a couple of picks on the first possessions, it's all about the ground game now for the Thundering Herd. Yeah, you see, taking a look at Greg Hudson right there, not happy with his defense. They're not playing and responding. They made some big plays early, but they've hurt themselves with mistakes, and they cannot stop the run. Right now, Marshall's offense doing a great job of dominating the line of scrimmage up front. What would you say about your guy, Greg Hudson? You would describe him as a happy-go-lucky guy? Yeah, my guess is there's going to be a couple choice words at halftime, and... To his credit, ECU does a good job of making halftime adjustments. I'm sure that they'll come out and try and do something, but right now it doesn't look like they can do anything against Marshall's run game. Dwayne Harris returns into the 27. And once again, we'll see Patrick Pinckney. So instead of the quarterback rotation between Pinckney and Rob Cass, it is all Patrick Pinckney here in the first half. They're trying to give him some confidence. Last week it was the same thing. They left him in for the first half, and... Wanted to see what Rob Cass could do, and it's flip flop this week where Pinckney's getting a chance to be able to move the chains and do something offensively, and gets a good first down right there, showing some good patience to stay in the pocket and moving the football. Finding T.J. Lee. First couple of uh, possessions for East Carolina were both three and out, and then field goal drives on the last couple of possessions for the Pirates. They try to quick snap it here on first down, trying to catch. Marshall off guard defensively. Heard back on their heels, and TJ Lee makes the grab. It's out of bounds. Well, this is what ECU needs to do is get in that hurry up, no huddle offense. There's only a minute and 13 left in the half, and with as tight as this ball game's been, being a six to three ball game with the turnovers and the ineffectiveness of both offenses in the red zone, any sort of points down here would be a big difference for a first half to go in at halftime and have some confidence. But the way Marshall's playing, they are not going to make it easy for ECU Pirates. Pinkney out of the shotgun on second down. The check down goes to Brandon Simmons. Simmons leaning forward for an East Carolina first down as he runs over Daquan Bembry. Well, I'll tell you what, Carter, in the Conference USA, we're used to seeing these air it out offenses with very little defense, but this is a tremendously physical football game today. These players are going to be sore in the morning, but both teams playing extremely physical right now. 
Into Marshall territory on first down. Pinckney wants to take a shot, just sails it over the head of Dwayne Harris. With 53 seconds remaining in the half. Offensive line of the Pirates did a great job in pass protection on that play. Pinckney had some time and some options to be able to get the football. Dwayne Harris running a little bit of a corner out, ball just overthrown. Pinckney settled down a little bit and could put that ball on the mark. That would have been a crucial completion, but second and ten and still plenty of time for the Pirates to move the football. Dwayne Harris had to retie his shoe before he could line up in the slot on second down. Lots of pad. Ball was tipped by Albert McClellan on the second down pass. Patrick Pinkney, six foot. That's one of the problems you have with a, a guy who's a shorter quarterback. Well, Albert McClellan, that's his fourth pass breakup on the year. He's got a knack for it. And I'll say this, anytime I was blocking against a defensive lineman and he batted the ball, it means he was making no progress to the quarterback. So as good as it looks on film, it oftentimes means the defensive player is getting blocked. Pressure coming on the near side on third down and 10. Pirates pick it up. Time for Pinkney to throw downfield. Caught for a first down into the red zone. Devon Drew. Great job by Devon Drew. ECU getting smart, moving the pocket on a waggle. Just hits Devon Drew, the big tight end on a corner route. That young man does a good job of getting into the seams and finding the holes or the open grass in the zone. Great job by ECU moving the football on that play. First and 10 from the 16 with the clock ticking under 30 seconds now in the first half. East Carolina does have two timeouts left. They run the football on first down. Norman Whitley, and here's the second called timeout by Skip Holtz, who's furious. Timeout, East Carolina, their second. This will be a 30-second timeout. The Pinkney didn't get that ball snapped quicker. Well, I tell you what, that was a good call, but poor execution. The right tackle, DJ Scott, got beat by his man. His end was able to come around the outside and get the tackle. But a draw against a very physical defense is what it is you want to be able to run. But keep your eye on the right tackle. Number 44 does a good job of coming inside and making the play probably prevent what could have been a first down. Great heads up play and job by that Marshall defense. 20 seconds away from the half. We'll send you back to the CBS College Sports Desk. Dara McIntosh, Brian Jones, David Pollock, including an update on Nick Saban's return to Baton Rouge. I think the LSU fans maybe thought a thing or two about Nick Saban coming back with his Alabama team. Well, you gotta, you can't blame him. He goes to the NFL and leaves them with having so much success, and then he comes back and goes to such a rival. Of course, they're going to be bitter, but it's probably because they lost a good football coach, although they've got a pretty good one there now in Les Miles. Second down toss is complete to Alex Taylor. They'll mark him out of bounds, and no flag upcoming. Now, the line judge marked him out. And clearly, there was a hit after that by Mario Harvey, but no flag. Maybe the uh, referees are forgetting that this is a home game for ECU and these calls are supposed to go their way. Earlier in the game, we saw number 23, Dakota Marshall, get flagged for a very similar play against the quarterback. They didn't call it there for ECU, but you have 16 seconds left, five yards to go. It's second down, first down. ECU has to find a way to be able to put this ball into the end zone and go into halftime with tremendous confidence. Look for Devon Drew at the bottom of the screen. That's what Patrick Pinkney does. Touchdown, East Carolina. The Pirates first into the end zone. You see the excitement there of the crowd and the fans and the players. Great job by Patrick Pinkney getting the ball to a second leading receiver and big target. Devon Drew going up on the fade with the nice soft hands. Great job in execution by ECU. Ben Hartman boots through his 72nd consecutive point after touchdown kick. And it's a 13-3 lead for East Carolina as Pinkney leads the touchdown drive.
at the end of the first half. But they're doing a good job. Look at the bottom of your scheme. You see Devon Drew looking right in at the quarterback, hoping to make eye contact. They probably worked this in practice and know what's coming. Does a good job selling the route inside. Absolutely beating the cornerback, T.J. Drakeford, out there on the edge. Devon Drew is a tremendous receiver and showing some great ball skills for a big guy in a tight end. They're absolutely turning around the cornerback back there. But to Marshall's credit, they've got to be able to find a way to respond offensively. And Carter, you have to remember, they had almost broke a big kick return earlier in this ball game. ECU is not out of this half yet. They have to make one more play because Marshall's return game could make them pay. Drew with his second touchdown catch of his senior season. That's a weakness for Marshall at corner. You have two redshirt freshman corners in memory and Drakeford. Drakeford's taken over for J.J. Johnson, who was dismissed from the Marshall program over the summer. Short kick. Skip Holtz thinking along your wavelength there and that he'd seen a couple of good returns from Marshall in the kicking game. So just kick it short. A couple of seconds run off. And now Marshall gets it at the 34 with 10 seconds left in the half. 10 points in a ball game like this can be huge if ECU's defense can hang on. It would be very big for them, but Marshall's offense, as explosive as they've been on the ground and being able to run the football. Old Mark Can not doing a good job when he throws the ball deep, turning the football over early with the interceptions, but looks like Marshall's going to dial up a play and try and get one in before halftime. Can is just two for seven passing with a couple of interceptions. And he will take a sack in what will likely be the end of the first half. C.J. Wilson, the lumber in the lumber and lightning combination at defensive end. So a solid end to the first half for East Carolina. A touchdown on the last offensive drive. C.J. Wilson sacks Mark Ken. That's the end of the first half with the score. East Carolina 13, Marshall 3. We'll send you to CBS College Sports Desk after these messages. Welcome to the CBS College Sports Desk at the half edition of Marshall, Marshall at ECU alongside David Pollock and Brian Jones. I'm Dara McIntosh. Guys, this is a battle for first place in the East Division of Conference USA. Your thoughts on the first half? Well, it was a great defensive battle, and I love a defensive battle being a former linebacker. Well, I'm still a linebacker. I always Former's a linebacker. Good. Listen, <laughs> I, I like this ball game until that last possession there. Pinkney hooking up with the big re receiver, Drew. This was all about defense and solid defense on both parts. Yeah, and Mark Can for Marshall is deciding to throw it to the wrong team. He's got the same amount of completions to the other team as he does to his team. So if Marshall wants to stay in this game, we know ECU's defense is good. you got to have some kind of balance. They have none whatsoever so far. ECU's defense is good. C.J. Wilson gets the sack on Marshall's Mark Can to end the first half. All right, this is the scene at Dowdy Stadium. Halftime of your Marshall at ECU game where ECU took a late 13-3 lead over Marshall. And we'll see. That's going to do it for us here on the CBS College Sports Desk Halftime Report. Adam and I will be back after the game with more highlights and scores. For Brian B.J. Jones and... Davey, David Whatever. Pollock. I'm Dale McIntosh. <laughs> we take you back out to Carter Blackburn and Aaron Taylor at Dowdy Stadium for the second half, where ECU is leading 13-3. Enjoy the second half. Oh.